Good evening, my beautiful, beautiful people. Thank you all so much again for joining, for joining, for being a part of this Get Up From Your Comfort series. You know, this, this, this is really making me proud. This is truly making me proud. It's just so funny because I was going to create it as just a video that was gonna be called Get Up From Your Comfort. And I realized there's so much more to to touch on, so much more to talk about, and you should make it a series, Asia. So go ahead, make this a long time series, and see 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 what God allows you to do with it. And I am just so 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 happy. You know, this isn't this isn't about blowing up. This is bigger than me. This is bigger than me because I've already gone through this. You know, my mission is so that my stories will help the next person to realize what it is that is holding them back and why it is that they should get up from their comfort zone. That is the most important thing for me right now is when it comes to the series. And I plan on doing more. I honestly, Lord willing, I plan on doing more because this is a journey of life that we are living, that we are going through. And a discussion is always needed. Most definitely, we always need to have a discussion. And we never need to be afraid. We never need to be afraid to talk about anything. So I am opening the door for questions for new video content, um, content concerning the Get Up From Your Comfort series and what it is that you want me to talk about in the series. And if you have any series ideas on what you would like to talk, like to hear from this channel and specifically in my most authentic way, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Do not hesitate to drop it in the comments. Do not hesitate to you know, just just don't hesitate to share it, okay? Don't don't hesitate to share it. But I I wanted to continue on the uh, it is what it is part two of unaddressed um, pain from part three. This is still part four, but it is what it is is such is such a powerful phrase. Because we say it so much, not understanding the power of what we say, and not also not understanding that if our actions don't align with our words, then we're in contradicting with ourselves. And now we're in a battle of what my heart wants versus what I already know. And then we often say, oh, well, when I can't figure it out, it is what it is. Oh, he cheated on me. Oh, it is what it is. Oh, we broke up. It is what it is. Oh, they don't want to be my friend anymore. Oh, it is what it is. Oh, I got fired. Oh, it is what it is. Oh, I quit my job. It is what it is. Oh, I lost my house. Oh, mm, I got a new car. It is what it is. Do you want a new car? It is what it is. Do you want a relationship? It is what it is. Do you want to graduate? It is what it is. <laughs> we use it too freely. In some cases, it makes sense. But in others, it doesn't. And because it doesn't make sense, it's like, why are we using it so much? I wanted this particular subject to be on attitude, disappointment, and reality. When it comes to your attitude about things, when things happen to you, it is up to you to change your attitude. Change the way that you respond to the things that are going on in your life that don't make sense, that cause you disappointment. I understand we don't like disappointment. Disappointment doesn't do nothing but make us feel the things that we don't want to feel. Disappointment doesn't make us do, do anything but want to throw rocks and throw darts at stuff and, you know, use people's pictures and put darts on their face and all this other stuff. And, you know, disappointment is basically something that we try to avoid but it's there it's right in front of us we try to not feel disappointment because you know your parent could say you know i'm mad at you but if they say i'm disappointed in you that'll hit way different than i'm mad at you that'll be way different than oh you're 
you're you're gonna get a whooping. That that'll hit way different because disappointment is a very very powerful word because it's like wow, disappointment makes you feel like everything that you put on the inside, everything that you thought about me and everything that you loved about me and everything that you were proud of me for, it now has changed your perspective about me. You know, I didn't expect you to do this, but now that you did, you changed my perspective about you. You changed my feelings about you. I didn't know that you were going to do this to me. I didn't expect for you to go out and betray me in the way that you did. And because you did, now I have to act in this, either this, I don't care way, or I have to say it is what it is and to move on in order to keep my sanity, which what people don't understand is the fact that I'm trying to keep my sanity in public, but I'm losing my mind behind closed doors in private. And because I'm losing my mind behind closed doors in private, because I'm not dealing with it in the way that I should deal with it and it's not proper, I'm making it look good on the outside, but on the inside, I am hurting. It is it is really taking a toll on me in my mental state. That is why it's just so important to make sure that when disappointment comes, you are always reaching out for the one who was disappointed millions of times but he paid the price already. It is your choice to reach out to God when you get disappointed. Because even though you're disappointed, God will touch you. He will touch that person's heart. And all of a sudden, you won't even understand it. But it's like, I was deeply hurt about this. But God did some heart surgery on the inside of me. So where when I think about this, I don't even get upset. And because of what you did, it caught me off guard. It did because I didn't expect you to do that because I had so much expectation for you, for us, that we were going to be good. But I didn't expect it. To go that way. So now I have to act like I don't expect you to change. I don't expect you to still be in my life. So it is what it is. I have to act as though. And all you're doing is putting on a front. And sometimes it's not even a front for other people. It's a front for ourselves. Because like I said, we want to make sure that we're still sane. We want to make sure that we're okay because who's going to see about me, right? Nobody. I see about everybody else, but who's going to see about me when something like this goes downhill, when I feel like I'm hurting, when I feel like I'm going through, when I feel like I'm about to throw in the towel, who is going to see about me? Because at the end of the day, I take care of everybody. And I'm supposed to be the strong one in this, right? Don't mislabel your occupation. There are a lot of ways to be strong, to be healthy, to be sane. To still have to still have and walk away with your dignity. And not feel like you're losing it. But you can also handle it in a proper way, in a proper setting with the proper people. See, that's the problem. We run to the wrong people and the wrong things and we wonder why things don't get better and why people who are still in our lives just happen to make it worse. But we don't remove them because we think about the history, because we think about the connections, because we think about the moments, because we think about the memories. But what we don't remember are the memories that hurt us the most. 
And when we do think about the memories that hold us, that hurt us the most, we brush it off because eh, that's my girl. Eh, that's my guy. So it should not matter, right? But it does. And it hurts more than it helps when you keep somebody in your life that keeps continuing to hurt you. And what's dangerous is the fact when people don't know that they're hurting you. Unknowingly, that is dangerous because they will continue to do it thinking that it's okay. But you're the one catching the bullets. You're the one catching the scars. You're the one that has the story to tell about them to somebody else, but you can't tell that same story to them because they're gonna lash out and they're gonna deny it and they're not gonna remember. And what people don't understand is the fact that people wait for an apology for years, not knowing some people block stuff out of their brain purposely. So when you go to tell somebody about something that has happened to them, they're like, I don't remember that. That wasn't me. I don't, I don't recall none of that happening. Are you sure that was me? Are, you're bugging. I'm look, I'm sorry that happened to you, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. That in itself should tell you either they don't want to admit it because they do remember, or they've completely blocked it out of their brain. But see, there's nothing that you can do about that. It don't matter what they did and how long you've waited for an apology if they do not remember what they did you will not get an apology that you feel like is sincere because people can apologize to you for the things that you've said that you've done to them but they don't they don't even remember but they feel like in order to make you feel better in order to respect and acknowledge your feelings okay i'm gonna apologize so that we can get past this and sometimes that's all that you're going to get. But if you don't address that pain right on, you're going to go years looking for something that you were never or could ever get from the person that hurt you because you feel like they owe you something. I'm sorry it happened. I'm sorry they betrayed you in the worst way. I'm sorry that that took place and it changed your perspective on a lot of things in life. I'm sorry that you had to go through that and because you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm sorry. But what can you do about it now? You can't do nothing but pick your head up, give it to God, pray for them, and move on because that's when your forgiveness needs to grow because always remembering that forgiveness is not for the other person it is for you you are the one that is dealing with this they don't even know that you're dealing with this so it's dangerous when you don't address your issue and you put it on other people because they're the ones that are supposed to pick up the pieces. You can't make people suffer for what other people have done to you and they didn't even know them. They didn't even know you at the time. So as I close, I'm going to ask you this one very important question. What is it? that you are still holding on to that you should have let go a long time ago. It's been holding you back mentally. It's been holding you back spiritually. It's been holding you back physically. Everybody else can see it except you. And even if you can see it, why haven't you done anything about it? It's not cliche to go through a therapist. It's not cliche to go to a church and talk to a counselor. Because you don't want people in your business. Well, somebody need to be in your business because you obviously not worried about your business. You about to lose it. What is the problem? And if you can't go to them, go to the one that has a solution. And if you don't know how to do that, you better find somebody that does. 
because two or three is better than one. Woo. Thank y'all so much for being a part of this series. I really hope that this blessed y'all. Please come back again for part five. I, I honestly feel like it is what it is. Just, it just needs to continue. So come back for part five, part three of it is what it is. Good night. I love y'all.